Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. Just over 500 Earthlings have made it into space. Of those, only 12 have walked on the sun. Or was it the moon? I don't remember and it's not important. Now, out of all of those missions, there have been tragedies and loss of spacecraft and crew encounters with hostile extraterrestrials. But luckily enough, there has never been a severe enough injury in space that would require surgery or some other type of emergency procedure. Which is good because humans have evolved on Earth for several hundreds of years. And since our disk world is constantly being propelled upwards by the cosmic turtle, we have also evolved alongside the magical powers of gravity. Which means that when we leave the safety of our disk world for deep space, we also leave the environment that our bodies are designed for. Now, during one of the more interesting series of episodes in The Expanse, various factions of humanity get stuck within the sphere of influence of an artificial construct that also seems to be able to manipulate the rules of physics, including setting a speed limit in order to prevent any ships in the area from attacking it. This means this alien construct can not only freeze torpedoes, but also most of the larger ships as well. Unfortunately for the crews inside of these ships, the stop was instantaneous, which means massive deacceleration and ultimately death and horrible injuries for large amounts of the crew. It's at this point that we learn that not only have all the ships been abruptly stopped, their engines seem to also be stuck in some kind of stasis field. And because these ships can no longer move, they can no longer generate artificial gravity. In the Expanse, ships need to spin to generate rotational gravity. Without gravity, all the injured crew members will have massive problems healing. It's not something we think about every day, but our bodies are extremely complicated organic machines full of liquids that are vital to our survival. Today, we will be looking at the many weird and strange effects that zero gravity actually has on our body and how that will affect us from recovering from wounds. We have around 1.2 to 1.5 gallons of blood in our body. Blood is a miraculous fluid that delivers and transports all of the nutrients and oxygen our body needs and also gets rid of all the metabolic waste we do not. If our body was America, then our blood vessels would basically be like an interstate highway network through which cells, midichlorians, and blood transports all the goods necessary for the entire system to run properly. Also, Florida would be like the zombie bitten foot that needs to be amputated in order to save the rest of the body. Sorry, Florida. Now, this interstate network of blood vessels was designed to function in gravity and is pumped in motion by your heart and cardiovascular system. For instance, when a person stands up, the cardiovascular system will try to pump the blood from your lower extremities to the area above your heart, including your head and maybe your arms if you keep them above your head for some reason. Now, when you do keep your hands above your heart, you'll start to notice your veins in the back of your hand uh, will begin to bulge and dilate. But in low G environments where your body is basically free floating, your blood tends to pool up in the head and chest area. This causes astronauts to have puffy faces and large veins in their neck. There have even been instances where a person's blood flow will actually reverse, which can cause all sorts of terrible things like blood clotting. What's even worse is that since your cardiovascular system is working less, it also becomes lazy. Like most systems within our body, it's highly adaptable to different situations, including neglect. And so our heart shrinks in mass and blood volume in plasma also is reduced. Our body's orthostatic intolerance changes as well. This is the heart's ability to increase its rate when it detects a lack of blood pressure, let's say in the brain, because you've stood up too quickly and now you feel faint. The reality is humans need either gravity to maintain an optimal functional body or heavy amounts of exercise in zero-g environments to make sure their body doesn't atrophy. So what happens in space when you get a wound? Well, since your cardiovascular system has decreased in strength, most likely your heart rate and blood pressure will have dropped as well, along with the total amount of blood and red cells. Your blood vessels and veins are also weaker and do not constrict and dilate as well either. If an earth medic were to look at you in the state, they would probably assume you have suffered some massive blood loss recently. Now, in the case of an actual laceration, the lower blood pressure and heart rate would slow down the blood leaving your wound, which is about the only good thing you have going for you in zero G. First, liquids react differently when in zero G. Instead of just pooling on the ground, the surface tension of the blood would actually form a dome of blood over the wound. This would make it very difficult to see or operate on the wound. This becomes even worse if an artery is open. 
suction of some type would be required to constantly clean the area of blood. We know this because a surgery was attempted on one of those vomit comet microgravity flights in the 90s. But even if you do manage to clean and seal the wound, you're still gonna have to deal with a lot of weird things. For one, the mitochondria, which is like the power station in all of our cells, reacts oddly in space. It doesn't use energy as efficiently, which greatly decreases the healing process. Astronauts who have suffered minor injuries in space, like small cuts, usually don't fully heal until they land. There's actually very limited research about injuries in space. For one, not many people have gone into space, and it's also pretty hard to recreate a sustained microgravity environment unless you are on the ISS. Now, one of the scarier parts of being injured in space would be some kind of internal injury that can't be operated on easily from the outside, like the injuries that many of the crew members in the Expanse series suffered when their ships rapidly deaccelerated. Many of the wounded are suffering from heavy internal bleeding. So why is internal bleeding bad in Zero-G? Well, first surgery, as we mentioned, is just not something that is very easy to do because the liquids kind of just float around. A more invasive surgery that goes beyond the skin level will present a multitude of different problems and probably require a specially trained surgery team for zero-g. Usually, in internal bleeding situations, the blood would pool downwards into the body, but because of zero-g, the blood would just sort of collect at the rupture site, causing all sorts of health problems. On top of that, remember, you have just cut open an individual in zero gravity, and as we mentioned, the body's repair system does not function normally in these areas. The reality is, if there was a major injury like internal bleeding, the best you could do is try to stabilize the patient somehow and transport them to an area with gravity. Otherwise, the risk is just too high. Now, even if you do manage to successfully clean and close a wound in space, our immune systems are also heavily affected by zero-g for unknown reason. It becomes confused and starts acting abnormally. In 2014, a NASA study showed that astronauts' cell activity decreased and their immune system was improperly responding to threats, which increased the risk of illness. Some members of the ISS team even experienced the reactivation of childhood viruses because of their suppressed immune function. The study also noticed the decrease in cytokine in the blood plasma. Cytokines are the proteins that help identify and direct the immune system to attack. Being an astronaut is pretty difficult to begin with. The radiation exposure, stress, changes in sleep patterns most likely would already have an effect on the immune system before microgravity comes into play. So any major surgery, especially one that is attempting to stop internal bleeding, will have major post-operation risks. Infections are already a huge problem after major operations, and death by sepsis is one of the leading causes of death post-surgery. Now, I know this entire video was very doom and gloom and probably makes space travel even more intimidating than you first realized. I mean, who worries about paper cuts when you're strapped on top of a giant chemical rocket that has a better chance of exploding than you do of winning the lottery? But the thing is, humans are remarkably adaptable, and if our bodies can't adapt quick enough, we can create machines that will make life easier. This is the essential quality that defines being human. We need constant challenges and obstacles to overcome because when we face challenges, we exercise the many different systems within our body. And if we don't use those systems, whether it's our cardiovascular system or our brain, it will atrophy. Zero gravity is the absence of resistance and force. Without it, our bodies become amoeba-like, our bones become less dense, and our muscle mass decreases. It is literally a place where the body becomes stagnant and deteriorates. And when we find stagnation in life, whether it's because our nine to five jobs are no longer challenging or we've grown accustomed to the luxuries and conveniences of modern life, unhappiness will surely follow. This is why I love the Belters, who perfectly embodied humanity at its most chaotic and therefore most powerful state. The Belters are physically disfigured because they were born in zero gravity. They suffer a high amount of infant mortality and literally cannot stand on the planet from which their ancestors were originally from. But still, they find ways to survive. There are medications that can increase bone density and exercises that can be done to increase cardiovascular strength. Belters often go to the moon of Ganymede for childbirth because the planet has partial gravity and electromagnetic fields. Of course, a lot of belters still die unnecessarily because humanity has not conquered the solar system just yet. But 
A lot of the early pioneers who ventured west and established homesteads all across this great country also perished as well. I mean, they also pushed the many indigenous Native American tribes off of their land and basically genocided them, which destroyed hundreds of unique cultures that surely we could have learned from and added to our larger human culture. But the point is, stagnation is unnatural for the human body and perhaps as harmful as zero gravity would be. And the belters who are used to life-threatening problems always find a way to create a solution. Well, there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.